I'm Casey. I work at the City Creek Harmons in the cooking school. Uh, and today we are going to be grilling some steak and green beans and then having a little bit of uh, toast with that. The steak we are using today is our tri-tip steak. You can use flank steak, skirt steak, hanger steak if you can find it. All really good choices of steak to use today. So for our tri-tip, we're gonna do a quick marinade. We're gonna marinate right in a Ziploc bag. I love to do this just so it's a lot less cleanup, fewer dishes to use. Uh, and then you could just mix right in here. So I've got our bag open. It is kind of a nice idea to, if you fold that outside over the edge just a little bit. I'm going to add our lemon juice. I've got some lime juice and then orange juice. Now, fun little tip. If you don't have a little squeezer, you could just use your tongs to juice your, juice your citrus real fast. And then that way it's all nice and safe. I've seen some people use a knife to stick in there. Not real safe for that. Minced garlic. We do sell minced garlic in our stores so you don't have to mince your own. And it is fresh mince. Just go to our produce department. Uh, they have it there. Now, I've got a few different seasonings here. I've got cumin, coriander, paprika, and a little bit of cayenne. Now, if you like spicy, you can always add a bit more cayenne. If you don't love as much spice, don't add as much cayenne. It's very simple. Uh, very customizable that way. Mix that together. We're gonna toss in our steak. Now notice I haven't done salt and pepper. I like to do salt and pepper at the end. That way I don't wash off too much of my salt. Salt is very important when you're, when you're cooking steak. Uh, the more fat that's in a steak, the more salt you're gonna want. So if I end up washing a lot of that off inside my bag, then I'm not gonna have as much salt to make it taste quite as good or as good as I want it at the end. All right, now, preferably, if you have the time, you wanna let that rest at room temperature for 30 minutes. Letting your steaks come up to room temperature is important. So if you do this for 30 minutes just out at room temperature, it kinda helps two things. It helps open up the steak so the marinade could go in there. It does also help uh, your steak come up to room temperature, cooks it a little bit faster and quicker uh, and I could go into more of that as it's cooking. Now, if you're doing this on an outdoor grill, heat it up pretty hot so we get that first good initial sear. I've got these guys pretty hot. We're doing these uh, just right on the stove top. Makes it nice and easy if you wanna do grilling on the inside. Just make sure you have a good, good fan system. All right, steak comes out. Then we've got pepper and a good amount of salt. This steak does have some pretty good fat content in here, so we want good salt. All right, now lay this guy on here. And again, now I'm gonna do salt and pepper on this other side. Now, when you're grilling steak, or just, you can even do it, this technique is for searing steak also. Don't turn it too many times. The more you turn your steak, the, the less it cooks, the, and the worse your sear actually is gonna get. Now, uh, it's really important with your grill lines, if you want those good, consistent grill lines, the more you touch it, often you're not gonna get that good sear. You're gonna get multiple little cross lines, and it doesn't look quite as pretty. We wanna let this go for a good four, to eight minutes per side. So I'm gonna do four minutes this way, rotate it four minutes that way, and then I'll flip it four minutes, and then four minutes, and uh, rotate it 90 degrees four minutes that way. Just so both sides get those good cross hatches and everything just stays nice and cooked. Um, now, with our steak, letting it come up to room temperature here, uh, that internal temperature is gonna be right around like 60 to 70 degrees. We want to cook it to 135 degrees. That means we cook it less. If we pulled it right out of the fridge and cooked it from 100 or 35 degrees to 135 degrees, we're having to cook it longer, also risking burning the outside. So let your steak come up to room temperature. Now, while that's going, I've got these beautiful green beans. I love this time of year. It gets me really excited to go out, start cooking, uh, but some of the fresh produce we have 
beans, peas, really amazing. You just wanna use a little bit of canola oil. Now we're using canola oil instead of olive oil because we are cooking at a little bit higher temperature. And olive oil burns at roughly 305 degrees, you're extra virgin. Canola oil has a smoke point of about 420 to 450, so I do prefer that. Give that a good toss. Make sure you have just enough oil, you don't need a crazy amount, but you do want all your green beans coated. All right, now, the beauty about doing green beans or veggies on an indoor grill plate is you don't have to worry about things slipping through the cracks. If you are gonna do this on an outdoor grill, you do wanna be careful or be mindful of how you place your veggies so that none of your veggies are gonna fall through and just end up burning or singeing down in the fire. All right, so just gonna spread these out. Now, I want to start seeing a little bit of charring on these. I like to cook these at high heat so you char the outside without overcooking or making the green beans mushy. So we'll come back to those in just a second. Now, steaks to rotate this. We're going to just lift. So you see how I have those good sear lines that way? Rotate at 90 degrees, and then we'll get those uh, sear lines the other way. So we'll have perpendicular sear lines. So our green beans are continuing to go. We're gonna start seeing them charring in just a second. Just trying to get some good spacing here. You don't wanna overcrowd your items when you're cooking or grilling. If you overcrowd, what ends up happening is you're, you're gonna end up steaming rather than searing or rather than charring your items. I don't want steamed veggies. I don't want steamed beans. I want, um, I want charred beans. So make sure each of them is in contact with that pan, and you'll, you'll get that contact that you're looking for, those grill lines that you're looking for. All right, so I'm gonna flip our steak. So you can see down there how I've got some really good cross hatching. Gonna start working, working on this side now. It's very important with steak to just be patient and let this go. If you keep messing with it, it will take longer. One way to think about that is you have heat coming from our bottom source down here. So if I keep flipping it, this top part's gonna cool a little bit. Then I'll flip it to get that hot again, and then where it was, it's gonna cool again. So you're just kinda keep playing that game. Let that heat stay long enough to get into the meat to where it needs to. All right, one last little part to this while we are waiting. I've got our artisan bread, this is our uh, French baguettes, one of my favorite things. I did slice them on a bias rather than just coming in making little rounds. When you're grilling stuff like this, making it bigger will make it fall through the cracks a lot less if you're doing it on an outdoor grill. Just using some of our olive oil, I'm gonna drizzle just a little bit. Sometimes if it comes out fast, you could put your finger over it just to not get too much out all at once. Now that will start to spread out on its own. You don't really have to worry about coming in and brushing it or anything. If you want to, you can, but it's not 100% necessary. Little bit of salt on here and a little pepper. I like salt and pepper everything. Season as you go. <laughs> All right, now, gonna just place that. Now I do know I used canola oil earlier for other items. We're not gonna leave this bread on long enough for this olive oil to burn too bad. So we're just gonna let it kind of warm up, get just a little bit crispy, pull those off, and we're gonna go. I'm not looking for any char or silk, uh, grill marks on that. All right, toss my green beans around. You can see on here how I'm starting to get some of that char on there, and that's what I'm looking for. They're getting nice bright green. Oh, I just love green beans. All right. Gonna rotate our steak. Now, we just have to be patient and kinda just let everything finish. Now, as your steak finishes, it is very important to let your steak rest. Often, a lot of people get so impatient that they cook their steak 
and I'll just cut right into it right away. Letting your stake rest, so the rule of thumb that I like to follow is let your steak rest half the time it takes to cook. So if it takes 12 minutes to cook, let it rest for six minutes. What that does, so there's a thing called carryover cooking. That piece of meat is going to continue to cook while it's resting. The outside is so hot, the steak wants to be the same temperature all the way through, so it's going to continue to pull that heat to the inside of that steak, uh, create, or balancing out the heat all, all the way through. So try to think, so larger pieces of meat are gonna carry over cook a little bit longer. I would guess that this one is gonna carry over cook at least 10 degrees. So if I want this to finish at 135 degrees for medium rare, I'm gonna pull it off the, off the grill at 125 degrees. So I'll come in here. I like to come into the side at the thickest part. Do my quick little read. We're not quite there, so I just have to be patient. I always like to teach that when you're cooking steak, it's not about how much time a steak takes to cook because there's a lot of variables with that. Um, the big thing is how big that steak is. And if you've let it rest and come up to room temperature a bit, uh, each steak is gonna take a different amount of time. The big thing to cook is by temperature. So getting a instant read thermometer, they're typically right around 15 to $20, uh, is going to make your grill game or steak game be to the best that it can be. Now, uh, when you pull this off, let it rest. You don't really, we're, we're only gonna let this rest probably like six minutes or so. You don't really need to cover it. Oftentimes I get asked, cover your steak is that best. It's not necessary. There's so much heat there that that's holding on to. Unless you let it rest for like a half hour, covering it isn't gonna be necessary. Um, ooh, don't forget your bread. <laughs> uh, so yeah, don't worry about covering your bread. Not a big deal. Now our beans are just finishing up here. All right, plating. When you're plating these, I like to get a whole handful of these green beans. Pull these off here real fast, just so I don't have any burns. Can you see how beautiful these beans are though? I've got a whole lot of crosses and everything on here. All right, so we've got our plate. I'll put my beans down on the bottom. You can line them up, you can kinda crisscross them, however you wanna do it. Then our steak will slice against the grain here. Let me take a temperature one last time. We're getting close. So when we let this rest, we're gonna wanna cut across the grain. So if you can tell here, the grain of this steak is going back and forth this way. So we're gonna wanna come and cut this way. Don't worry about cutting long strips. You can just cut in half here before you cut into those long strips. This guy was thicker, so I'm gonna let that side cook a little bit longer. But we'll just come in here and we'll slice. You'll lay those across. Continue to cook that just a little bit longer. You'll get your toast on here. And then we've got some balsamic reduction. Now you can make your own or we sell this downstairs. Just get a nice little squeeze bottle of it. And you'll come in, do a nice little drizzle. It's one of my all time favorite. I get really excited to grill in the spring and the, and the green beans are just so wonderful in the spring. You've got your bread uh, and your steak. For more recipes, uh, go to harmansgrocery.com or find us on YouTube. Yeah, we'll see you soon.